Good morning, everyone. Dexy from A2K. And thanks for joining us in today's webinar, Introduction to the Product Design and Manufacturing Collection Overview. We will have Applications Engineer John Pitcher presenting for us. So we just go through about A2K ourselves. We're all about fostering innovation, resulting in training. A2K Technologies has a vital role in helping the infrastructure, building, mining, construction, architecture, and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services such as education, consulting, and IT managed services. We're working with visionaries to, set, to shape the future of design and, in turn, enable them to innovation to minimize risks, improve productivities, and achieve excellence. A2K Technologies is considered the business partner of choice and trusted advisor by vendors and clients. We partner with major software and hardware vendors to meet our clients' technology needs. We strive to exceed client expectations by understanding the challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. We work with clients and companies of any size nationally and abroad. Over to you, John. Thanks, Dan. You can hear me okay there? Yep. Very good. Good day, everyone, and uh, thanks for tuning in for today's webinar. Uh, my name is John Pitcher. Um, it's a pleasure to be presenting for you today. And uh, first up, just a couple of things about me. Uh, I'm presently working with A2K Technologies as an application engineer, uh, mainly focused in the mechanical space. Uh, my background is in manufacturing. I've been involved in various mechanical aspects, uh, including like hydraulics and pneumatics, CNC programming, uh, machine tool manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, my, my apprenticeship as a fitter and turner many years ago. But for the past 14 years, I've been directly connected to the Autodesk channel and uh, the, the line of manufacturing products specifically. And more recently, I've been focused on 3D printing or additive manufacturing, as uh, some of you may be, uh, be, be aware. So um, we do a range of uh, different 3D printing applications as well. So uh, that's a little bit about me. So with regard to today's um, webinar, the plan really for the next 40 or 50 minutes is to just have a bit of a general overview of the product design manufacturing collection. Um, all those amazing tools that Autodesk have included in that particular collection of products um, that are mainly aimed at design engineers and uh, people that are in that industry. And basically these tools give design engineers the edge over, um, over the competition in the sense of being able to get their concepts and designs into a workable scenario and uh, solution for allowing them to uh, I guess work in a collaborative fashion to try and get their models to market faster. So uh, we'll take a brief look at uh, how those tools will help firstly design engineers. Um, we'll look at some of the production tools, uh, just a brief look at CAM, um, computer aided manufacture and CNC, uh, like I said, which is my background. So I've done a little bit of that in my time. Uh, we'll then look at some of the sales tools just quickly uh, to look at how we can generate um, magnificent visualizations of our products uh, as we release them to market. So being able to use a collaborative suite of tools within the Autodesk Product Design Manufacturing Collection uh, is certainly a, a massive benefit being that we can all work on the one platform. Finally, we'll have a brief look at generative design, which is um, a facet of Inventor, um, which some of you may not be aware of. It's a very powerful tool. Generative design allows us to look at various iterations of our model as they, um, as they come to hand and uh, certainly do some uh, testing and uh, uh, simulation as to how we can better make our product to make it lighter, uh, to make it more cost effective to generate and uh, so on and so forth. I was hoping to run a live demonstration on that, but unfortunately the generative design engineering inventor complained uh, with the Zoom session. So, uh, Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that, but I'll certainly still step you through some of the functionalities. I will jump into Inventor quickly and just show you how to set up a, a study um, and, and have a quick look at that uh, all going well. So that's a bit of a plan for the next 40 minutes or so. So um, basically, um, I guess with Autodesk solutions, we often talk about the future of making. Um, and, and you've probably heard us talk about that before, but uh, why do we talk about that so much? Well, it's because the products that are currently being introduced into the market are forcing us to rethink how we imagine them, how we design them, and of course, how we finally manufacture those products. And when I say the future, it's actually about what's happening right now, isn't it? There are a few current trends that are having an impact on our 
concepts and our design approach and the amount of, uh, the amount of data that we consume to tackle these problems. And that has a big influence on the way we get an idea uh, from our, uh, our engineers or designers and getting that product into the hands of customers um, and in the most efficient method and the most efficient way of doing that. So those radical changes in the way things are designed uh, certainly bring challenges to your business. Um, rapid response is obviously something that anybody that's in business nowadays would be aware of, uh, certainly in the manufacturing sector. Um, and we often hear from customers and clients of our own that they're always looking for ways to innovate, but they struggle to find the time to do that. So both your customers and the consumers out there in the, in the marketplace are looking for better performance, which requires a complete understanding of how your designs are going to operate before they're built. So no longer do we build prototypes and do testing, we basically do this all in a digital world. So I guess the real question that we need to pose to ourselves is, are we getting the most out of our machines? Are you doing everything we can to ensure there's no bottlenecks? How do we improve our processes and make ourselves more efficient? How do we become more lean? And I guess at the end of the day, kinder to the planet um, when we're manufacturing different products. And I guess ultimately, what are some ways to win more business, to gain reoccurring business from your current customers? Obviously, they're some of the main challenges. And that's where the product design manufacturing collection that Autodesk have released comes in. So Autodesk offers this amazing solution that spans across the entire design and manufacturing sector. It includes a, a raft of different tools um, that we can use to design, we can use to simulate, we can analyze dimensional tolerances, uh, we can do things like nesting, uh, CAM, as I mentioned, with CNC equipment, and of course, um, reducing travel time and creating a more lean factory environment uh, by, by chasing down some of those inefficiencies of product travel through our particular, particular market or a, a production process. So all of that data is stored and managed in a secure project. And best of all, the collection is available as a single affordable subscription called the Product Design Manufacturing Collection. So we've got quite a raft of tools here, as you can see. Um, we've got a range of different tools that span across that entire platform of, from very concept, so uh, certainly for doing sales bids and, uh, and launching new products. Uh, obviously, we want to visualize those products before they go to market. Obviously, you can see there's quite a, a large suite of products in the design and engineering phase. We've got Fusion 360, Obviously AutoCAD, mechanical, um, we've got AutoCAD electrical, um, a range of different tools there as well with the AutoCAD tool sets. Uh, Inventor, which is of course the hero product of this particular collection. Um, we've got Inventor Nesting, which is a product that allows us to flat pattern products and uh, lay them out most efficiently on a, a sheet of stock material. We've got another tool there, Inventor Tolerance Analysis, which allows us to interrogate our 3D model to ensure we've got best fit and function with clearances and various other elements of the, um, the production process. So moving through then, um, yeah, we've got a range of tools for CAM. So we've got Inventor CAM, uh, we've got HSM, very, very powerful tools that uh, certainly can manage uh, five axis CNC machining. Um, then we've got another bunch of tools at the end of that where we've got uh, Recap Pro, for instance, and Navisworks Manage that allow us to take that product into various other elements of our manufacturing process, if you like, right through to presenting the, the actual digital model to the client, maybe for post-operational uh, servicing, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that data is all collaborative and held in um, a data management system, which you may have heard of called Vault, um, that allows us to successfully manage all of our data in a secure fashion and uh, making sure that we've got replications and copies of that data as we need. So basically um, that whole solution, uh, all of those products are all included in the product design manufacturing collection. So many, many different applications that are aimed at different aspects of production and design and manufacturing that uh, enable us to get our product to the market quicker 
uh, to do many simulations and tests on the product uh, before we even think about creating a physical model. So many, many options here that the Autodesk uh, collection includes that allows us to do that. So really it's a collection of technologies that enables us to connect on a single design platform. We can automate processes and accelerate production. We can obviously innovate and clear time for more innovation and uh, have your engineers looking at different uh, methods of design and, and different functionalities of making your production processes more lean and uh, certainly more proficient and efficient as you move forward. So basically we can connect as well and, and we can run the entire process of this um, effectively uh, using cloud tools to enable us to save to the cloud if that is your preference. Obviously we can do most of this as well on a, on a local server, uh, but the nice thing is the tools are all interactive. So effectively we're able to work with, for instance, a cutting tool path in a CAM system directly inside Inventor now. So rather than having to go to a separate system and, uh, and work with a CAM system that is a, a separate scenario where you may be bringing in a parasolid or, a, uh, or an IGES file or a step file, we can now work natively. So an update to the CAD model, to your 3D CAD model, will prompt an update to the toolpath within your CAM system. So the Inventor CAM will recognise that there's been a change and offer you the option to apply that change to the cutting toolpath as you work through those particular processes. Obviously, when we talk about production, uh, we need to be able to produce uh, smart manufacturing methods. If we're not smart in the way that we do things, it's not necessarily about working harder, as we often hear the catchphrase, it's not so much harder work, it's smarter work. Um, and certainly having a CAD CAM interface that all links and that is all uh, interactive certainly helps us create uh, much more smoother downstream changes and simplify those machining workflows and reduce production times and ultimately reduce waste and uh, create a more efficient and um, an effective process. So let's just quickly take a deeper dive into the capabilities beginning with design and engineering. How can we make our design and engineering systems more efficient? Well, the concept of designing your products uh, begins with professional, two, professional grade 2D and 3D CAD. Flexible modeling tools for parametric and freeform design changes. Automated tools for specialized modeling, modeling types such as sheet metal, structural frames and mold creation, so for plastic injection molding. We can reduce repetitive tasks and quickly reconfigure parts and assemblies using iLogic. Some of you may have heard of iLogic, which is an, uh, uh, an included aspect of Inventor, where we can effectively configure our model dependent on certain conditions. And I'll speak a little bit more about that in a minute. But like I said, the big thing about this is we maintain an associative link to those files from other CAD systems. So if you are receiving files from a supplier in a different CAD format, Autodesk have a technology called AnyCAD. This particular technology allows us to interact and retain some of those connectivities with other CAD systems. So there's some very powerful tools in the AnyCAD technology that allow us to work with that and uh, certainly with uh, connecting to BIM as well. So for those of you that are involved, involved in the uh, building industry, uh, I'm sure you've heard of BIM technologies and certainly working with those is something that we can link into. So while most 3D CAD software providers encourage companies to make the move from 2D to 3D, in many instances, the best solution is a combination of both tools. 3D parametric CAD has proven to improve overall engineering productivity and continuing to use AutoCAD for specific use cases with an associative connection between modeling rules and uh, those things that, uh, that certainly set our design in process. And then we can use whatever tool is best suited to our particular scenario and, uh, and to move forward with, with that. So we can benefit certainly from the downstream use cases of 3D models for digital simulation, et cetera, et cetera. But we can also still use some of that 2D information to perhaps control the way that our 3D model uh, behaves. And those of you that have been involved in Inventor before may have come across the concept of skeletal modeling, 
which is, I guess, a, an example of that, where we can have a 2D model effectively drive the parameters within our 3D model to control maybe an envelope that a, a robot needs to work with, for instance, um, or, or something of that nature. So rules-based design is one of the most powerful and effective ways to save time. And this is where we talk about iLogic. We can define rules to quickly reconfigure our designs to meet demands from our customers and certainly for customization and flexibility over your products. As you can see in the example there of a conveyor, obviously conveyors vary in length and width and direction and um, height and angle and all those sorts of things. But we can reuse an existing assembly and drive those changes using iLogic rules. And of course, that just reduces time consuming repetitive tasks, but still produces an accurate quote that are driven by the rules that we've established within the iLogic interface. So we can win more business um, as we move forward with the design manufacturing collection. Obviously, we've also got professional grade parametric and freeform modeling tools within Inventor. And that will help you design anything. In fact, more than that, we've got a massive library and most of you that are using Inventor, I'm sure would be aware of the content center library, um, which consists of over a million parts now. So there's many bolts, nuts, washers, split pins, circlips, bearings, all those sorts of engineering uh, items that we purchase off the shelf are basically ready to be placed straight into your design. The nice thing about that though, we can, um, not only can we take these in, we can build our own libraries to include here. If you've got a library, for instance, of aluminum extrusions, we can certainly add those into the content center and, uh, and make that a, an item that we can use for, yeah, perhaps aluminum window construction or whatever it might be. Also, there's a bunch of generators, as you can see at the top of that slide. So we've got um, calculators and generators that allow us to look at things like world information. Uh, we've got powertrains. So uh, whether we need to generate a, a, a chain and sprocket assembly, we can look at the torque settings and the, uh, the various requirements uh, that, are requ that are needed to uh, give us a certain output from a certain input. So there's many, many options, but basically the big thing that really we need to talk about with the product design manufacturing collection is the fact that we've got the option to collaborate very, very clearly and communicate our design both to internal teams or with customers externally. We can share views and uh, share them via the internet if we need to. So we can share views to enable us to uh, collect working process feedback from anybody else in the business. So we can certainly track down and, and follow up with, uh, with design changes as they are made and certainly include all the various stakeholders uh, within uh, a particular process or uh, chain of uh, manufacturing. So there's many, many orientation tools. We can um, review the design with exploded assemblies. We can measure and section and mark up all of our different um, models to enable us to create uh, more efficiency, I guess, in feeding back information to the designer and, uh, and getting that product to market in a more uh, quick fashion. So most 3D CAD software nowadays has some entry level FEA uh, that we can use to solve for uh, things like stress analysis, we can test for deflection, um, but are you getting the most important information that you need from your design? Are those results telling you the whole story? And this is where Inventor Nastren offers advanced simulation studies that are set up and solved to observe results without leaving the familiar Inventor interface. So we can do nonlinear thermal fatigue and dynamic studies, and they offer a complete understanding of your product performance with accurate results. And so that technology is now powered by the widely accepted industry standard Autodesk Nastran Solver, a very, very powerful tool to help us conduct finite element analysis and other aspects of, uh, of uh, analysis within our model. So a very, very powerful tool within the Autodesk Nastran product that enables us to, uh, to do some simulations and uh, various aspects of uh, testing within our environment. And really effective collaboration between 
mechanical and electrical mechanical uh, engineering teams can be challenging at times, but what if electrical and mechanical designs could talk to each other? What if they sync with each other? What kind of impact would that have on your current engineering flow? That's what electromechanical design between inventor and AutoCAD electrical uh, have the ability to do. So we can share up-to-date information, not only from our electrical schematics, but directly into our inventor 3D models. A very, very powerful tool to be able to link AutoCAD electrical and the inventor mechanical processes. So very, very handy to be able to set up uh, some of that in your digital model to uh, to identify uh, how the model is going to sit together in an electrical and mechanical type scenario. So let's move on now and, and talk a little bit about production and uh, some of the aspects of the product design manufacturing collection that can help us improve our production efficiencies and as I mentioned before become a more lean working environment. One of the tools that Autodesk have added in the past couple of releases, I think this was released in about 2018, um, was a tool called the Inventor Tolerance Analysis Tool. What this does, it allows us to actually put geometric and dimensional tolerances on our 3D model. The amazing thing about this is, once we've assembled our model, we can do some analysis to see how our Tolerancing is, is all fitting together. We can look for interferences, obviously. Uh, we can look for prescribed amounts of clearance. Um, and we can certainly research different aspects of our model by having all those dimensional constraints linked to our 3D model. This is very, very powerful. Obviously, previously, we used to put all of our dimensioning on a 2D drawing. Uh, that was all well and good, but certainly we've moved on from that now, where basically our 3D model is sent straight out to a CNC machine, and obviously the tolerancing is done on the 3D model. No need to really look at a 2D drawing to pick up your tolerances. We can do these now entirely in the 3D model. So obviously if you've got a press fit between a, uh, a bush and, a, and a, a spindle or a shaft or something of that nature, we can certainly analyze that particular interference at the model level. So rather than confirming that your uh, your press fit has got the correct uh, clearance or interference. Uh, we can certainly analyze that. So this obviously pushes a lot more information to the CNC programmer. Uh, so the person who's writing the code for our particular uh, component has the ability then to interrogate the model and look more closely at how those items are, are connected. The other very powerful thing with this is obviously service finish requirements. So there's many, many options with this. And uh, when we look at service finishing, obviously uh, to lap something or to hone something is much more expensive than just a machine finish. So when we look at those various elements, um, we can look at uh, how we manage our service finish on each of those items. Uh, we can look at manufacturing tolerances that have a, a significant impact on, on cost. So obviously to, uh, to generate more or reduce cost, we need to look at um, how we can reduce uh, high tolerance finishes and uh, make our model work together better. I guess the, the big question is, is that tolerance or, or the stack up of that tolerance preventing our assembly from fitting together? And so the tolerance analysis tool in Inventor is designed to help Inventor users make informed decisions while specifying manufacturing tolerance and so that's a CAD tool that's embedded. Obviously, 1D tolerance analysis um, allows us to understand the impact of mechanical fit and performance based on cumulative dimensional variations. So very, very powerful tools that are available to us by analyzing our tolerances at the 3D model level, rather than simply putting them onto a, a 2D sheet of paper. One of the other very powerful tools that, uh, that I'm very interested in is the Inventor Cam module. Uh, so Inventor Cam is a, a very powerful tool uh, for generating toolpath and cutting data uh, to manufacture your product. So the design manufacturing collection obviously includes Inventor Cam. Uh, basically this just appears as another tab and I'll show you this a bit later on. I'll, I'll go into Inventor and uh, just give you a couple of pointers on that. But basically we can, um, turn 
our ideas into machine part very, very quickly. And uh, as I mentioned before, we can have any functionality from 2.5D for simple laser cutting, um, right up to five axis machining. So obviously lathe and mill turn applications, so machining centers and uh, many, many involved tool path cutting operations, things like adaptive clearing, um, we can certainly reduce our cycle times, which is something that all manufacturing companies are chasing, um, and obviously increase the, uh, the life of, uh, as we call it, a tool on job um, usage there to, to improve our efficiencies. So one of the things that's involved in that, and I'll point this out a little later on, is adaptive clearing, which enables us to reduce our cycle time greatly by, uh, by reducing chip inclusion and, and uh, clearing uh, clearing out the uh, the swarf as we machine. So some very, very powerful tools that are available to us here. One of the other ones that I mentioned earlier, this is a fairly new offering as well in the, uh, the product design manufacturing collection is the nesting tool. Um, obviously, if you're into uh, laser cutting or water jet cutting or uh, profile cutting, um, one of the big things is, again, to reduce waste by laying out your profile cuts efficiently on a piece of stock material. So you might have a 24 by 1200 sheet that you need to cut so many components from. How can I lay those out on that sheet um, and most efficiently uh, reduce the amount of waste product uh, from that particular uh, scenario? So inventor nesting, again, works into, uh, associatively with the inventor interface and basically enables us to lay out our profile cuts on a, a sheet of raw material, as I said, and effectively um, allows us to create a study, if you like, that we can look at the most efficient way of using that material. Again, all interactive. So if I make a change to one of those particular profile cuts, the nesting study will come back and say, you've made a change, that particular part will be better ro rotated or orientated in a certain fashion to enable you to uh, receive greater efficiency and reduce the cost uh, to the end customer by cutting down on material waste as we, as we do that. So very handy to be able to nest our profile cuts into a particular scenario. Again, like I said, all in the one interface. Like I mentioned, Inventor has many, many of these options that allow us to make our life more efficient and uh, to seek out for a much more lean type manufacturing system. Lastly, we just wanna, in the production tools, we just wanna talk about factory design. And uh, obviously one of the, the very powerful tools, again, included in the design, uh, product design manufacturing collection is the factory design utilities. This particular tool is designed to look at the way your products flow through your production processes. Uh, again, something that is a, a very important part of any production environment uh, and process engineers obviously would be aware of things like spaghetti mapping and, and ensuring that we um, make the product travel in the shortest route as, uh, as it enters and leaves our production facility. So certainly being able to run with the production options with factory design utility, we can set up conveyors and uh, robots and things like that to allow us to analyze uh, the shortest possible route that we can use to get our product uh, from the start phase out the door and into the hands of the customer. So factory design utilities is a very powerful tool that, uh, that allows us to do that and gives us the flexibility to look at the way that our production processes are managed and certainly processing that in the quickest possible fashion. So, the last little section I'm going to talk about here before we jump into Inventor and have a quick look at the uh, generative design tools is some of the sales tools. So just a couple of quick slides on this. Basically, design review um, and, and looking at the way that uh, the Inventor tools and the other tools inside the product design manufacturing collection. Obviously, we can simulate a lot of these things as well. But to be able to set this up as a uh, an engineer and look at the way that your product is going to uh, to move through its particular workflow or whatever it might be, is a very, very powerful tool. So um, again, the, the main tool for, for, of choice here is Navisworks Manage, and it 
uh, allows us to bring in pretty much any CAD model and we can stitch them all together into a factory or whatever it might be to show a particular production line and, uh, and how those parts are going to move through that. We can do clash detections um, and uh, no problem with having very, very large models in Navisworks as you, if you've ever come across that, um, many, uh, certainly millions of products can be included and uh, Navisworks uh, is built to manage those particular scenarios. So it's really not just built for design reviews, but uh, we can do walkthroughs, like I said, uh, we can use it for clash detection, um, and uh, even use models from other CAD systems. So if you've got a particular machine designer that is using another CAD system, you can bring that into Navisworks and uh, sync that quick equipment and that process as part of our manufacturing scenario to, um, to allow us to do that. So all this can be accomplished and the model all stays synced at all times and uh, the, the linking to each of those aspects of our, uh, our other CAD systems is all uh, maintained as an associative link. Certainly screen captures of models are helpful um, and just looking quickly at professional rendering and animation, but really everybody knows that um, you can produce a 2D drawing and, and give somebody a copy of that, but what if we need an image that's going to go onto a production brochure or, uh, or something directly to our customer that we need to show? Certainly showing um, different elements of that. Autodesk has some very, very powerful tools um, in VRED design. Some of you may have heard of that particular tool. Uh, we've also got 3D Studio Max, which is included in the product design manufacturing collection. So it doesn't matter if uh, whether you need a, a rendered image or a cinematic quality video, 3DS Max is a very, very powerful tool to enable us to um, give our customer a realistic view of their product way before we even think about sending it into production. So being able to show a, um, a cinematic view of that uh, and being able to uh, develop elements and uh, items within 3D Studio Max, we can obviously uh, give a much greater and uh, more, more impressive element or part of that, uh, that particular process. So that's what we need to do, I guess, to remain competitive, isn't it? Um, we need to have a software application that's 100% purpose-built uh, for those uh, compelling images, if you like. And certainly 3ds Max is, is a tool of choice in that regard. Okay, what I'd like to do now is introduce you to generative design. If you've not uh, seen generative design before, it's a very powerful tool that, um, that certainly allows us to uh, interrogate our model, I guess. Uh, so we can come up with a basic design and uh, look at the way that that design might fit into a particular scenario. But as you know, uh, as the world moves forward, we need to make things with, uh, with less. So effectively, we need to make more with less. And this is where generative design comes in. Uh, we're obviously all about reducing waste. And uh, I guess at the end of the day, it's, it's about an environmental thing, isn't it? We, uh, we certainly live in a very disposable society, but to be able to make items with less is, is certainly something that design engineers throughout the world are, are looking, at, uh, looking at ways of doing that. So basically with generative design, we come up with a design and uh, we can load that up into Inventor and uh, then look at what we call the shape generator. And I'll take you into Inventor in a moment and just quickly uh, highlight some of the, uh, the functionalities. I can't run the shape generator because it uh, conflicts with my Zoom meeting, I think. But uh, so rather than crash my Zoom meeting, I'll just give you some static captures of that. But what genera uh, generative design does is uh, it's a technology that will help us explore design iterations or ideas that we'd never thought of. And obviously we use the power of the cloud to, uh, to do that. And uh, we can look through a whole range of different iterations, as you can see on the slide there, of uh, the best possible use whilst maintaining the correct load and stress ratings of our component, um, we can look at, at doing that. This little example here is um, actually from General Motors. And uh, basically we have a seat belt bracket that was, uh, that was used previously. 
And um, you can see it was fabricated from eight components on the left, uh, where basically we, um, the bracket itself uh, was manufactured from a series of pressed metal components and fabricated parts. So we had uh, numerous uh, elements to that that were all put through different production processes to create um, a bracket. Basically what the designers did though, they took that assembly and put it through the generative design mode. And as you can see on the right there, um, we ended up with one component. It was 40% lighter and 20% stronger. Again, you wouldn't sort of think to design that off the top of your head. It's um, quite an interesting looking design. But effectively what happens is that the software looks at the regions that you need to preserve it looks at where the load is applied to that particular assembly and then we can tell it to generate a shape that uses the least possible material uh, whilst uh, staying clear of other areas so we can preserve certain areas and regions as well um, and uh, look at how that uh, that works. So I've got a little uh, a little video here that I hope will play for me. It, um, it's a little video of a motorcycle that's got a swing arm that's been built. So I'm just going to play that through now. And maybe Dex, if you can just confirm that that's actually playing okay. Can you see that all right? Yep, that's playing, John. But there's no Very sound. Good. Thank you. No, that's fine. I'll just talk you through. So effectively what we've done here is we've set up some regions of contact. So obviously the swing arm uh, mounts around this shoulder here. And here's the other uh, sections that it connects to on the rear wheel. Obviously, there's a point on the, uh, the suspension up here that it connects to as well. And uh, effectively, what we do then is we set up the regions that we're not allowed to clash with. So obviously, your swing arm can't run through your tyre. So the red areas are the areas that the swing arm needs to, uh, to miss the actual uh, design of our, of our model. So obviously, it would need to miss the chain as well. So we've preserved that region. So they're the obstacles that, uh, that we're not allowed to clash with. And effectively, we run then a load. So we tell Inventor that we want to put uh, so many Newton meters of load upwards on the, the swing arm. And then we generate that. And basically, this is what Inventor will spit out. So it will give you a whole range, hundreds and hundreds of iterations of the options that you might choose to use. And we can then go and filter that. So I'll just jump back a little step there. So you can see here what we've done here is filtered certain elements with regard to strength and stiffness. Uh, we can reduce the cost, the mass, the drag. Uh, all of these elements are elements of, um, uh, that we can filter out. So what you can see here is we're left with maybe half a dozen or so of these particular elements of our swing arm. And effectively, we can then take that to the next step where we can look at how they're going to fit and how's that actually going to look when we put it into our motorcycle. Interestingly, um, also the, the software has the power to send you to a number of organisations that actually have the ability to 3D print this component for you. Now, again, this is obviously something that uh, if you were to go into a production environment, you may look at changing that or, or certainly reducing the way that uh, that swing arm looks. It may not be the look that you desire, but um, as you can see here, we can certainly go through and apply each one of these uh, particular iterations of that and, uh, and see how that's going to, to apply. So there's one example. If we replace it with this one, do we like that look a little better? And again, down here, you'll see that we've got manufacturers. And in fact, there's a company in Sydney who would quite happily print this for us, perhaps in, uh, in such and such a material or whatever it might be. So yeah, quite a powerful um, powerful tool in that I guess we're exploring different iterations of a component that might fit into our, our, our assembly. Okay, so yeah, very, very powerful tool. So I guess the, the big thing that I'm really trying to point out here is the amazing interoperability of all of the products within this product design manufacturing collection. So like I said, we're, uh, we're probably familiar with the Inventor tool, but you may not be familiar with things like um, nesting or uh, with the CAM functionality or maybe Nastran isn't a tool that you've looked at in the past. So as you can see, we've got a whole cycle of tools or a whole um, suite of tools that are available that take us from uh, very early concepts 
uh, and looking at the way that we can produce a product. And obviously we can reach out to different stakeholders within the business to look at the way that our um, changes to that particular model are going to affect changes down the line. Uh, we can look at the way that that's going to, uh, how manufacturing processes are going to function and uh, you know, things like cam cutting paths and, and tool paths. And uh, we can look at that just to name a few of the elements of interactivity and connectivity within this product design manufacturing collection. So we've got a very, very powerful bunch of tools that are available to us. Certainly worth, uh, worth looking at uh, these tools as, they, uh, as they're available to us now. So I've just got a couple of case studies and comments here from different companies. Um, these are a couple of companies in the US. Uh, Claudius Peters is a, a company that um, reduced uh, material costs by 25% uh, by using uh, the generative design tool. Uh, so yeah, very, very powerful and obviously being able to look very quickly at how you might design something. Uh, there's a couple of these studies for a couple of different companies that um, uh, just case studies for people that are using FEA and possibly Nastran to, to generate their design study. We won't go through these in any detail. Uh, here's a manufacturing customer that was using, um, that has switched over to using a CAM solution uh, to generate their toolpath, but the real benefit again is the fact that um, not only is the, uh, the system more efficient, but changes can be made at any point and obviously we can update our, our tool cutting path. Okay, what I wanted to do was just quickly, and, and this was the, uh, the little clever, so I, I, I modelled this up in Inventor for this particular um, demonstration, and I just thought I'd quickly show you a couple of the tools for that. Um, so if I just jump into Inventor here, I'm just going to load up my Inventor application. I have a resolution challenge going on here at the moment, but we'll work that out. Let's see if we can get this to fit the screen properly. So here's a clevis that I, uh, that I just uh, developed um, in preparation for this particular webinar. Basically there's four bolt down holes. So um, I've just put some M12 threads in the bottom there, uh, 25 mil um, central pin. So if you can imagine this would be a, um, a clevis that would sit over a hydraulic cylinder. So you might have a hydraulic cylinder that connects uh, so by way of allowing your um, hydraulic ram to connect to your bucket or whatever it might be uh, within your particular scenario. So basically with this, um, so this is uh, in Inventor 2021, uh, as I mentioned, we've got the shape generator tools up here. Uh, so basically with shape generator, we enter like a sub environment where we can go in and do a study, if you like, of how this particular component uh, will run. And in here we've got um, a range of different things and effectively like most of the inventor menus we work from left to right. Uh, we're going to create a study so we assign a material to that study. Um, in actual fact what I'll do I'll just quickly point out here uh, I'm not be able to run this anyway but yeah effectively if I was to no it's not going to let me do that but yeah effectively in here we can run a, um, a range of different uh, setups in the sense that I've preserved a couple of regions there around my threaded holes and I've effectively told Inventor that I need to uh, have this connected and that, um, that I don't want to change that too much. But effectively, here's all the preserved regions that I've set up. I've set up some pin constraints on each of the threaded holes. We add a load and I basically added a bearing load of 500 Newton meters, sorry, 5,000 Newton meters to the, uh, to the center journal here where the, where the pin would sit. And effectively what we do then is we generate the shape here by running this, uh, this mode here. And what that will do, it will basically take out any waste material. Um, again, brilliant for things like um, automotive industry where we're trying to cut down waste or certainly in aerospace and uh, aircraft industries. So we can create a reduced weight. Um, and again, obviously that makes a, a very big impact in any um, transport type industries. So being able to do that is, is very powerful. 
So yeah, unfortunately, if I try and run this, I think it will crash my Zoom session. So I won't run that today, but uh, effectively we set this up and, and run that as a study directly inside the inventor window. So if I was to go and make a change and move this whole size up to 30 mil and then put a um, thousand, uh, maybe, maybe 10,000 newton meters of torque on it, it would then look differently at the way that our, um, our model would be changed. So effectively what it does, it will reduce a lot of this waste material that's on this particular component. In actual fact, I think this part when I first ran, the, when I modeled it up weighed 10 kilos, um, when I ran the shape generator, I could tell it that I wanted it to reduce it to six kilos, uh, but keep all the same stress ratings. So effectively it looked at my model and said, okay, no worries in those threaded holes, we're gonna create a pin joint and uh, then we're going to do that. But yeah, so effectively that's how we run uh, the shape generator. Sorry, I can't run that for you today, but um, effectively it would prune out a lot of this waste material. So effectively it cut through here uh, and reduced the amount of connectivity, but again, would still cope with that 5,000 new newton meters of torque as I applied that to my particular scenario. One other area that I mentioned that I would quickly look at, and uh, look, we're certainly happy to talk about this further offline if you'd like uh, to chat further, get in touch with A2K, we can certainly give you some more information on any of these options. Um, but effectively the CAM tools, so here's Inventor CAM, uh, as I mentioned, sits directly inside your inventor window. So I could go through and set up a machining process here. We've got a range of different options for pocket milling. We can do a range of different tools there for, um, sorry, for, for drilling. Uh, we've got the option here to set up a post processor for a particular type of CNC machine. Um, we go in and set up the, the type of code that we need for that particular machine. Uh, so laser cutting, uh, many, many different tools in here that allow us to uh, yeah, either do uh, turning, two-axis turning, uh, multi-axis machining, and uh, just general 3D and 2D operations here. So the CAM interface is all interlinked within your inventor interface, which uh, if you're using that particular product at the moment, you'll be very familiar with, and uh, we can go through all of those tools. So even probing and, and setting up origins and act, um, datum points and references and uh, probing to do uh, testing as well as far as tolerance uh, tolerances are concerned. So look that was really what I hope to cover today. Sorry I can't run that for you. I, I really wanted to run that because it's uh, it's quite impressive to see that um, how that actually generates the, uh, the shape as we go through uh, our inventor scenario. So very, very powerful tools. And I guess at the end of the day, what I really want to point out is that inside the product design collection, you've got a massive assortment of tools that all link in to create a better design and manufacturing scenario. So um, it's a bit of a list of the, the key products that are included there. Uh, obviously, it's not just vanilla AutoCAD that we've got. We've got AutoCAD mechanical, electrical, um, a range of others as well. So. I guess the real takeaway from today is that, um, yeah, very, very uh, advanced tools, um, uh, literally a, a, a plethora of, uh, of tools that are included inside the collection uh, and all available and, and for your design engineers to particularly use in their scenario as they need to. So I guess the key thing at this point is, um, that's all I really wanted to present today. Um, I think we've got a, a little section of questions. If there's any questions at this point, please feel free to pop those into the chat window. You'll notice on your Zoom screen, uh, there's an option for Q&A. Uh, so on your Zoom panel, please, please feel free to pop some questions in there. Dexter and I will stay online, but um, just to point out as well, uh, while we're, if there's any questions coming through, uh, and I'm not sure if you want to talk to this one, Dex, but um, if you want to look at any of our upcoming webinars or our previous webinars, you can, jump onto this particular website and, uh, and see all of those particular options. So Dexter and I will wait online for, uh, for another five minutes or so. If there's any questions and answer, uh, questions, please uh, certainly pop them into the Q&A section inside your Zoom window. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll wait online. Is there anything else from your end there, Dexter? Did you want to add anything before we wrap up? I think that's, that's about it, John. So we'll just wait a couple more minutes to see if anyone has any questions.
Well, yeah, thanks for joining us at any rate. It's, uh, it's been good to share the time with you and I hope you found today's webinar beneficial and, uh, and valuable. Hopefully there's been some things there that uh, inspire you to take a closer look at the Autodesk Product Design Manufacturing Collection. Yep, so John, we've got a question from Latif. So um, yep. asking if am I able to access open terrestrial scan data using the manufacturing collection? I'll just see if I can find that question. It hasn't popped up online yet. Can you just repeat the question again? Sorry, Dex. Yep, so it's just in the chat chat window. So they're asking if am I able to access open terrestrial scan data using the manufacturing collection? Terrestrial scan. Um, so recap, um, I'm not sure if uh, Latif, if you've looked at the recap product, but um, certainly um, as far as terrestrial scan, that's a very good question. Um, Generally, scans uh, are managed via the recap interface, which is included in the um, in the interface. It comes down to a little bit of uh, what format that is in. So I'm not sure if it's a .xyz scan or a um, .icp file or or what you're getting that uh, particular scan from. But I would say most likely, uh, I would certainly be looking at recap as a product to do that. Yes, absolutely. Yep, so they just want to confirm if the product is called Recap. That's correct, yes. So, yeah, exactly as you've got it there, Latif, it's uh, Recap, R-E-C-A-P. Um, you can um, possibly get a trial version of that one, I think. Um, but, yeah, basically it's for bringing in scan files. And effectively what we do, if you know anything about scanning, um, and we do this quite a bit for, um, uh, for building sites or uh, for the likes of uh, utilities providers. So, um, of if uh, you've got a substation or something that you'd like to uh, scan, we can certainly scan that. Yes, it is an Autodesk product. Um, it's, uh, it's certainly included in the product design manufacturing collection. I think you can get that as a separate individual product as well. But effectively, if you've got a Leica scanner or a um, uh, BLK60 or whatever you might have to scan a site, uh, we can bring that in a point cloud. Um, in actual fact, I can show you quickly where to do that. So we can certainly bring these into Inventor as well. So there's options under 3D modeling here to, um, to bring in a point cloud. So we can attach a point cloud into an Inventor model as well. Um, so yeah, but certainly look at Recap, Latif. I think you'll find that a, a very beneficial tool. Uh, it, it manages, as you're probably aware, scan data is, uh, is a very <laughs> large element. I've seen some scan files that are well over 100 gig of data. Um, so managing those can be a challenge, but Recap is the tool of choice for that. So certainly, yeah, absolutely. Have a look at, uh, at, at Recap and um, I think you'll find that will, that will help you out in that area. So I think we just wrap it up there, John. Very um, good. Yep. Yeah, guys, so if, as always, if you have any more questions, you can always contact us by email at info at Bye for now.